Hi everybody, I'm Mike Roylance. I'm the principal tuba player with the Boston Symphony Orchestra. Um, I also teach at Boston University as well as the New England Conservatory of Music. I hope you are all doing well and staying home and staying safe uh, during this quarantine time. Um, this is how I'm getting my practice done. I'm down in my basement. Um, acoustically, absolute worst environment to practice uh, a tuba in. Um, the tuba is definitely in need of a large room because of the acoustical properties of the tuba, which really won't develop unless you have a large space. So I, um, just as a heads up, practice where you can, because this is obviously where I can practice right now. Um, but ideally, do not practice in small rooms or, or uh, wanger type rooms where the soundproofing uh, deadens your sound. Um, it's really important to be able to hear uh, your sound as it develops. Um, and a tuba sound does not develop uh, so close to the instrument. Uh, anyway, I wanted to uh, introduce you to uh, some practice techniques for that piece of music that I just played. Um, this is, uh, um, I hope you recognize it, it's by Richard Wagner. It was written in the 1850s. Um, I believe it was written, um, this is the beginning of Act 3. Um, yes, sorry, the beginning of Act 3, the second, the second in the ring cycle, the Valkyrie. Um, for uh, Wagner's Ring Cycle. And this was the theme from that. This is the uh, uh, Ride of the Valkyrie. And uh, it's it's one of the most commonly asked uh, excerpts, orchestral excerpts. And then if, if for those of you who don't know, an excerpt is just a part of a grand piece. Um, and this is just a part of an excerpt that's on uh, almost every audition I've ever heard of for tuba. Um, it, it, it tells a lot about the player um, that the people uh, listening, the people on the audition committee are listening for. Uh, uh, rhythm is absolutely paramount here. Time is, is, is important. Pitch is rhythm. Um, sorry, pitch is important as well. I wanted to talk to you about how to tackle excerpts like this. And if we have time, maybe I'll go into something else uh, as well. Um, so the Ride of the Valkyrie. Um, it's in the key of B major. This is the C tuba. Um, I'm just quickly going to go over how I how I practice this piece um, on a daily basis. Honestly, uh, it's such a difficult piece. Um, I've been playing this piece for years, and I'm still uh, trying to get better. Uh, musicians are in constant search of perfection, and I've yet to meet one that has found it. So, um, I'm going to uh, show you a few uh, breakdown practice routines for the Ride of the Valkyries that help me um, to establish uh, good time, good pitch, and good rhythm. And my personal opinion, the, the three primary important things, most important things in music are time, pitch, and rhythm. Uh, without those, nothing else matters. Nobody cares about how beautiful your line is or how incredible your melody soared. Or, or how beautiful your vibrato was or the nuance of your sound. Nobody cares about that if your time and your pitch and your rhythm aren't right on. So I'm gonna just go right into this. Um, the first thing that I do is to try to get my, my, uh, my pitch lined up. Uh, the BSO tunes at A441. Um, and as in baseball, that's a starting pitch. Um, and so you're, you need to train your ears every day to adjust constantly to pitch. Um, a B natural in a G major chord is much lower than a B natural in a B major chord. Um, you can Google that and figure out why that is. But you should know that pitch is a constant moving target and your ears need to be ready to adjust 
all the time. Um, I set I, one of the most important tools that I have, which used to be a Dr. Beat, uh, is now just an app on my iPhone. It's um, the app that I use is called Orfeo. It's rather expensive. I think it's $2.99. Um, and it's not the most high tech whatsoever, but I like the sound I get out of it. It's a real buzzy sound. Make sure that you set your intonation. As you can see, I have it set to A441. Um, I would say that's uh, still rather, generally that's kind of a low setting. I know orchestras in Europe, uh, 442 would be considered low. Many orchestras are even higher than that. Uh, most orchestras in the US are 442. Um, we're 441 and that's kind of where I set my, my calibrate my uh, my tone generator um, So I, I put it on B natural because we're in the key of B major here um, And let's See I get that going And I want to make sure that my my first note My F sharp is in tune with that B natural first. I'm gonna make sure my B natural is in tune of course You can use a tuner if you like. I, I, I think a tuner is a great way to, to sort of learn the, the uh, tendencies of your specific instrument. Um, but after that, you really need to rely on your ear. Um, tuning um, is, is not a, uh, a visual uh, cue, it's an audio cue. So learn how to tune by adjusting your ear. However, you can use a tuner to understand why a major how or understand exactly how low a major third is or how high a fifth is or the true whole step on a, on a dominant seventh based uh, based uh, from the tonic so i get my b in tune you notice i'm bending the pitch and i'm doing it with my chops um, uh, because I don't want to push and pull on my second slide. I think it's important to go down and come back up and then go up and come back down to try to find out and become truly aware of where your pitch is. The next thing I'm going to do is to try to find my F sharp. Now the F sharp in the key of B natural is the fifth, so that's going to be slightly higher than normal and you need to understand where that pitch lies. My normal F sharp uh, slide is about out to here. That's a little low for B major. I'm going to pull, push and pull just so I can make sure I'm right where it needs to be. going to make sure my F sharp is I'm able to consistently start my F sharp relative pitch to the B natural every time so I'm going to play my F sharp a few times over and over again feeling a little high so I'm going to pull out a little further a little low I mean the, the harsh reality is that even if you set your slide in a specific location, if you found the pitch to be right, the next time you play it, it might be wrong. So I tend to try to find a, 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 the small, smallest ring of a bullseye, if you will, put it in there and then hope for the best. <laughs> and then I make adjustments as need be on the fly. But I wanna try to make sure I can get about five or six of these F sharps rock solid. Starting to feel pretty consistent, pretty good about that. The other thing I'm looking for, which I didn't mention, is, is articulation. Um, we're not really going to talk about that, but I'm making sure that I can start the note consistently and accurately at the same time. Okay, I'm feeling pretty good about that. And then I'm going to connect the two. The very first two notes of this piece are an F sharp to a B natural. I'm 
gonna play a sequence of several F sharps leading into the B natural, and I'm gonna emphasize the last of the F sharps with an accent and a tenuto mark. So what I'm, I'm establishing is, uh, is basically a, a mental connection with the five, one, two, three, four, the four notes that I played before the actual pickup note. One, two, three, four, five, one, one, two, three, four, five, one. So the, the F sharp that I played, the fifth one is actually the pickup note. When I go to play, to start the actual excerpt, in my mind, I'm mentally playing those first four already so that by the time I play that pickup note, it's actually my fifth note. It's, yeah, it's sort of a mental game, but, but anything to help. And then I'm gonna see if I can rock right into the F sharp to the B with just one F sharp. My B still feels a little high. started to feel pretty good. Now I'm going to bring the element of rhythm into this. So I already mentioned time. We're going to get to that pitch. We just worked on quite a bit. Now I'm going to bring rhythm. There's, there's a rhythm that's in the route of the Valkyries that has to be accurate. This is the rhythm. It's a dotted A16 pattern. I want to make sure that rhythm is rocking. So I'm going to go turn my metronome on, make sure I'm at 88, which is kind of the world standard for the ride of the Valkyrie. I set it up for 88. How do I stop this? <laughs> I set it up for 88. I set it up for 88. I sure hope you could hear me through the tone generator. I put it on three quarter time, and then I put the division of the note into triplets. So, I, I, I can't emphasize enough to practice with the metronome. I used to do, use the Dr. Beat, so my reference would always be, you need to spend some more time with the doctor to get your rhythm set. So, I'm starting to feel pretty good. I want to make sure my pitch is in string. There's also an accent and a tenuto mark on the downbeat of each of those rhythms. I don't think the tenuto mark is there, but it should be. So that's one breakdown pattern. Actually, that was two or three so far. All right. The next breakdown pattern I'm going to do, I've, I've established that I can play the note, the F sharp and the B in tune. I've established that I can um, uh, play the uh, accented note correctly. I've established that I've, I'm able to play the proper rhythm. And I, all I'm doing is repeating the B natural over and over again. So. But I'm, I want to now introduce the actual note, the low F sharp. This is the most difficult note in every audition. Any tuba player that's ever taken an audition will always get comments. I should almost always get comments. I can't hear the 16th note. I can't hear the 16th note. Sometimes people will, will develop this to the point where they play the rhythm properly and they're pushing the right buttons down, but I don't hear any difference in pitch. And it's a big 5-1 change. You need to be able to hear that. 
So the next element of these breakdown patterns is introducing the actual pitch to that. So I'm still gonna have my tone generator on, still gonna have my, my doctor beat on. Now I notice my time. I'm also trying to play with good time and I'm starting to notice my time is getting a little bit dragging. So I wanna make sure I'm staying on top of that as well. And if it gets to the point where I, I can't just turn a switch and make it play in time the next time I do it, then I'll, I'll go back to a previous breakdown pattern. And then I'll go to the next one again where we're adding the F sharp. And I hope you can hear the pitch. I, I'm just playing with an iPhone mic, so I'm not so sure it's gonna come through. So, like I was saying, many people struggle with getting the pitch of the 16th note to pop out um, beyond just a rhythmic pattern. So I've seen people will, will play the, the proper fingering. It, it'll come out sounding like this. I don't know if you can see my fingering. I'm not changing the notes. And I've seen a lot of people come through and they'll, they'll play it and it'll, they'll actually be pushing down the right buttons, but that's what's coming through because they haven't developed the ability to play the pitch properly. So here's a good breakdown pattern to, to really bring out the, the 16th note pitch. It's, it, it's really just a matter of inverting the time, or I'm sorry, inverting the rhythm. <laughs> So the base of the rhythm is this. That's with no dot uh, and no 16th note. Those are pure eighth notes in 9-8 time because that's how this piece is written. It's in 9-8, there's three, three eighth notes per beat. Okay, the rhythm is written with a dot behind the first eighth note and a sixteenth note on the next eighth note and then a regular eighth note on the third. So invert the rhythm, switch the flag of the sixteenth note with the dot on the eighth note. So the, fl the flag of the, the first note becomes the 16th note, the second note becomes the, the uh, uh, dotted eighth note. Got it? And then go back to the original rhythm and see if it's helped at all. I'm going to go back and forth between the two and see if you can hear me improving. you see the pattern flipping great so then what i'm going to do is i'm going to go through the entire excerpt and play it inverted so play along or just listen see see what you think That's standard. So I'm gonna do what I said I was gonna do now and play it inverted, the whole piece.
Great. So I don't know if you're hearing my struggle a little bit. It, it, it's definitely very, very demanding to play this thing rhythmically correct while it's inverted. Um, and it will, it will help your sense of rhythm tremendously in this piece. Now I'm going to flip it back and let, let's see if you hear any improvements. Let's see. I hope you're hearing some improvement. I'm hearing a little bit, and it's a struggle. Every day, every day is is a battle to try to keep what you gained the previous day and try to gain a little bit more this day. Um, anyway, uh, this is so. This is one pattern. I'll, I'll get to another one in a second. But I wanted to talk about the, this excerpt when I when I get to the um, part, which is like the tenth bar in. Uh, there's a bar rest here and the bass trombone plays through. Um, it's very, very important that you play the next entrance in the proper place time wise. So this is the time you do it with the, with the metronome on. But believe it or not, that's one of the hardest things for tubist to do is to play that in the proper time so whenever whenever i'm practicing this um i always fill in that gap with this even that rhythm was lazy did you hear it almost triplety I'm filling in those holes with that rhythm so that when I play it by itself, I'm hearing that in the background. So that was the reason why I fill in that hole there. So there were a lot of things that I wasn't happy with about my playing there. There was pitch issues, there were some rhythm issues, and there were some time issues. And so uh, uh, there's thousands of ways to break this down um, and thousands of different ways to have breakdown patterns. That first inverting pattern is one of the best ones. If, if you play the whole thing with just eighth notes, and even better the first time around that's one breakdown that's the probably the best first breakdown pattern and then Every time you go through a breakdown pattern, always go back to the original written pattern. Um, a, a second or third breakdown pattern, which I'll do with this, is um, uh, duples. Um, this comes by way of my good friend, uh, Professor Michael Mulcahy from Chicago. Um, he, he introduced me to this duple. I know, um, you know, it, it's been extremely helpful to me. So again, I'll do the rhythm as written. And then I'll I'll play the duple rhythm, and then I'll go back to the rhythm. Now I'll do duples. 
Normally I would do the whole excerpt and then go back and do duples. Tone. Um, and then I'll go back to the original rhythm. And every time I do that, I, 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 I feel better. I, I think the rhythm is tighter. Uh, and the more I do that, the easier it is to, to wake up the next day and, and to play it closer to that that, that uh, goal of perfection. It's never gonna happen. Um, I, I haven't talked too much about pitch except for those first two notes. You know, th this, this ride of the Valkyrie is, is actually very, in, 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 in uh, concept, it's a very easy piece to tune because it's all arpeggiated. So I would go through this thing with this tone generator. And, and many times when I was just playing that, I wasn't very happy with my pitch. Um, Condensation, right? Just condensation, right? Um, so what I'm trying to do is, I'm trying to spell out the chord pitch-wise and see what I have to do with my slides and then play with the rhythm. So... some improvement in pitch anyway that is one of the pieces that is um is 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 uh at the bane of my existence if you will i mean it's it's one of those things that every day i still hit in a fundamental routine i i, I don't necessarily go to this depth in my in every day but i do hit this thing every day um anyway I guess that's about it for now, folks. I hope you all are, are doing well and all are staying healthy. Um, and um, check out all the other uh, BSO, uh, I think it's called At Home. BSO At Home? I'm not sure, sure what it's called, but it's a great thing. I, I, I'm, I'm one of the luckiest people on the planet to be surrounded by uh, such great musicians and to be a part of such a great organization. Uh, the Boston Symphony Orchestra from the top down. Um, uh, this is a, a difficult time for everybody and, and uh, just super uh, proud of the way the organization as a whole is handling this. And um, I wish you all well. Peace.